Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you guys how to use an OTG adapter with AutoBleam on your PlayStation Classic. This method also works with the standalone version of Retroboot if you're interested in using that program as well. So before we get started, I want to show you the hardware you're going to need to get this done. You will need two USB flash drives. You'll need one to install some payloads from BleamSync. I recommend using a regular flash drive. I was having some difficulty using a micro SD card and a card reader to get that part done. So I recommend for the BleamSync portion, a regular flash drive. I'm using a PNY 16GB 2.0 drive. For my AutoBleam and RetroBoot files, I'm using a Samsung 32GB EVO microSD card and this generic 2.0 card reader. As for the OTG cables, I have two I can recommend. This one is called the Octopus. It doesn't have an official name. We just call it the Octopus or Spider. It has three USB ports and then the power port where you're going to put your power cord into. It has a switch on the side that says charge and OTG. Make sure it is always on the OTG setting. And the other cable which is really popular with the NES and SNES classic scene is the Enatech. Now this one has three USB ports. There's a third one. Here's the power port. And what's nice about the Enatech is that it has card rear slots. So you can use a micro SD card right in that slot there without taking up one of your USB ports. There are downsides to using these cables. As for the Inatec adapter, the power cord is very short. You may have some difficulty plugging it into the wall. As for the Octopus adapter, the wires inside these parts right here are actually very, very thin. They break very easily. I've had this one for a long time, over a year now. I haven't had any problems with it, but unless you're very careful with this adapter, you can break these wires in these parts very easily easily. So if you do decide on one of these, be very careful with it. So next, let's take a look at the files that we need to get this to work. You will need BleamSync 1.1.0 and lboot.ebp. Your AutoBleam folder, the newest one as of the release of this video is 0.6.0 b2. And if you're going to be using RetroBoot for AutoBleam, the newest version here is 0.8 b. Throughout this tutorial, there will be some optional parts. And during those times, I'll put a big old notification on the screen, letting you know you don't have to follow along on that section. Huge thank you to Honey Lab for first discovering how to get this running on the PlayStation Classic, and thank you to the Mod My Classic team for implementing it into a payload. So our first step is to prepare the flash drive we're going to be using with BleamSync. We have it right here. What you need to do is right-click the drive, select Format. Under File System, make sure that FAT32 is selected, under volume label, it needs to be labeled Sony, all capitals. Make sure the quick format option is selected, then hit start. If you have a larger drive, you may need a third party program to get that formatted. I will include that in the description. Once your drive is formatted properly, go ahead and open up your BleamSync 1.1 folder. You're going to highlight both of these folders, just drag them onto the root of your flash drive. All right, looks like that is all finished. We're going to safely remove this hard drive from the PC and I'll meet you back at the PlayStation Classic. So before you do anything, you want to make sure that you power cycle the PlayStation Classic by removing the power cord and reinserting it. All right, so we have all our BleamSync files on this USB flash drive. I'm going to insert that into the number two USB port, and then I'm going to hit power on the PlayStation Classic, and we're going to take a look. You can see here the LED on the PlayStation Classic is blinking green and red. And we have the message on the screen, creating file system backup. It will take a couple minutes and it will. This takes a while. What's going on is your system files are being backed up right now and you will need those in case of something that may happen later on. You will need those specific files to restore your system. So make sure you let this process go. Do not interrupt it. All right, you should get this message at the end saying the hack is now complete. And you'll see that the LED turned off and now we have the orange color. If at any point during that process you saw a message saying there was an error, something could not be completed, you will have to start over. Usually that is caused by using a micro SD card for this portion or sometimes flash drives that will brown out the power limiter on the USB drives. So let's head back to the PC for step two. 
now we're going to reinsert our BleemSync flash drive back into our PC. You can see here, now we have a logs folder with a bootloader.log. Going into the BleemSync folder, you'll see we have more files as well. The first thing you want to check is to make sure that your backup files saved correctly. So we're going to go into the BleemSync folder and then backup. You have to have these three files. Having these files means that your backup completed correctly. So what you need to do, just like we did back in the NES and SNES classic days where you saved your kernel, you need to save this backup folder. So copy and save this somewhere. Keep multiple copies of it if you have to. It's very important you keep everything in this backup folder saved somewhere on your PC, flash drive, anywhere where you will not lose it. Restoring your system doesn't work like the NES or SNES classic where you can get any image file. You have to have your own files that came from your system to restore it. So I'm not joking when I say, take these files and save them everywhere. You will need these files in case you brick your system. So our next step involves this lboot file over here. We're going to go into the BleemSync folder and then update. Drag the lboot file into this folder and that's it. We're gonna safely remove the drive one more time and I'll meet you back at the PlayStation Classic. All right, so once again, here we are with our BleemSync flash drive and our PlayStation Classic. Just to be safe, we're going to pull the power one more time, reinsert the power cord, insert the flash drive into the second controller port, and we're going to hit power. There's our BleemSync logo and the message saying that the kernel will be updated. So during this time, you can see that the LED is blinking green rapidly. And then finally, when it's orange, you're safe to remove the flash drive. You have to wait until it turns orange. If you remove it before that time, you'll interrupt the update and you can break your system. And now we are done with this. We no longer need the BleemSync flash drive. So now we're gonna move back to the PC and I'm gonna show you what to do with your auto bleem and retro boot files on your second flash drive or micro SD card. Here's the drive. Once again, we're gonna right click and select format. You're gonna select FAT32 format. Although NTFS is available, I'll go over what you need to do to get that working. But for now, we're gonna select FAT32. Once again, volume label is Sony, all capitals. Make sure quick format is selected, then hit start. So that is finished. Now we're gonna open up our AutoBleam folder. We're gonna copy all four of these folders, drag them to the root of the USB drive. Looks like that's all done. Now we're going to open up our Retroboot for AutoBleam folder. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna highlight all three folders, drag them into the root of our flash drive. You should get a notification saying that the destination already has a file named retroarc.sh. Make sure you select replace the file in the destination. That's very important. Everything has been moved properly. For those of you using the standalone version of Retroboot, your process is even easier. Open up your Retroboot folder. You're gonna copy the three folders here, drag them to the root of your drive. And that's it, you standalone Retroboot users got it easy. So I mentioned before that you can use the NTFS format on your drive. You just need to apply a fix which was created by Nex of the AutoBleam team. I'll have a link in the description to his fix. So we're gonna open up this folder. You can see it just contains a single AutoBleam folder. All we're gonna do is drag that AutoBleam folder to the root of our drive one more time. It'll ask us to replace the file AutoBleam-GUI. Click replace the file in the destination. So we're all set. I'm going to safely remove the flash drive from the PC. Then I'm gonna show you how to hook up your OTG adapter and then we're gonna turn on the PlayStation Classic and see if this worked. So here is the card reader with the AutoBleam files on the micro SD card. We're gonna use these OTG adapters to hook it up. It's a little bit easier with the octopus one. You have to find one of the feet with the lightning bolt symbol on it. You're going to take the power cord from behind the PlayStation Classic and you're going to plug it into that port. This is what goes into the back of the PlayStation Classic. Just like that. So your setup is gonna look like this. We have the power cord right here going into the wall, the OTG adapter, which then connects into the PlayStation Classic. And you can use any three of these USB ports to plug in your adapter, just like that. So that is the method using the Octopus adapter. If you're using the Inatec adapter, it's a little bit different. You're gonna grab your Inatec power cord. One side is a USB and the other one is the port 
that goes into the adapter itself, which means you will need an AC adapter for this to work. So I'm going to use the AC adapter that came with my NES Classic. So I'm going to plug the USB port into the AC adapter and the other side into the adapter itself. Now you can see how short this cord actually is. I can't fit it really on camera. Oh yes I can. That's how short the power cord is. So like I said before, I recommend using maybe a USB extension cord with this. So I plug the Initech into a power source and you can see the light is on. Now you have a couple different options like I mentioned before with this adapter. You can take your USB flash drive or card reader, plug it directly into any one of the USB ports, or you can remove your micro SD card and plug it into the micro SD card slot. If you're looking at the top of the adapter, the micro SD card will face the bottom. Then you take the micro USB end and you plug that to the back of the PlayStation Classic. We should see the orange light come on. We have power to the system. All right, so this is our final setup. We have our OTG adapter with our micro SD card plugged in. And from there, it is plugged into the back of the PlayStation Classic. I'm going to hit the power button and hopefully auto bleam comes on the screen. You can see here, nothing is plugged into the front USB ports. The Initech adapter is blinking purple and red, it looks like. And there we go, we have auto bleam. And it's asking us to connect the gamepad to the PlayStation Classic, so we will do that. I'll plug this into the player one port. It says no games were found, push any button. There we go, and we have our auto bleam menu. If we hit start, Evo UI started and we have our games selected. And I didn't add any games to this, but what I will do is plug in a second controller. So here we go, auto bleam, two player mode. We'll start up Twisted Metal. We're gonna go to two player duel. Here we have player one, we'll select Sweet Tooth. Player two, we'll select Yellow Jacket. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you guys, if you ever wanted to uninstall all the files off of your PlayStation Classic, here's what you have to do. Just go to your BleamSync folder, then your Flags folder. In here, you're going to right click, go to New, and Text Document. Name that text document, Uninstall, all capitals, and then delete the .txt, and hit Enter. A pop-up will appear, saying that if you remove the file extension, it may become unusable. Are you sure? Yes, we are. So if you have this uninstall file in the flags folder and you insert this into your PlayStation Classic, you'll see a notification appear on your screen saying that it is being uninstalled and then reset your console. All right, so that's all there is to it. I hope this could be useful to some of you. If you guys have any issues with this, I will leave the auto bleam discord in the description for you to ask questions. And that's it. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.